Yes, you can play Steam VR games on the Oculus Quest 2. Since the Quest 2 is designed as a standalone device though, there are some hoops we need to jump through first in order to play games like Half-Life Alex, for example. Since you're watching this video, I assume you already know that this is going to require that you pair your Quest 2 with your gaming PC. If you didn't know that, well, now you know. And if you don't have a gaming PC, I'm sorry, but you're out of luck. Now, in order to play Steam VR games on your Quest 2, there's a pretty strict order of operations you're going to need to follow. You're first going to need to enable Oculus Link or Oculus Air Link on both your Quest 2 and your PC. If you don't know how to do this, I've placed a link to a different tutorial video that I made with step-by-step -step instructions on how to enable both Oculus Link and Oculus Air Link in the cards and in the video description if you need some help with that. If you're just hearing about Oculus Link and Air Link right now, uh, the short explanation is Oculus Link allows you to pair the Quest 2 to your PC using a high-speed USB 3 cable, and Air Link allows you to pair with your PC wirelessly using your home network's 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Again, if you need help getting these set up, uh, please check out my other video. This video is focused on running Steam VR games on the Quest 2, so I'm assuming you already know how to use Oculus Link or Air Link to get you to the Oculus PC interface, which looks like this. When it comes to playing PC VR games, there are two types I've come across so far. That being games that are VR exclusive titles, which have been designed from the ground up for VR, like Half-Life Alex, Boneworks, and many others, and then traditional games that have had VR support added to them, like Assetto Corsa and Microsoft Flight Simulator. VR exclusive titles I've found are much easier to run and have far fewer quirks that you need to learn how to navigate around. Uh, here's a quick example. I've got my Quest 2 paired with my PC using AirLink, and now I'm going to go over to the right here on the navigation bar and click on desktop. You may only have one monitor connected to your PC, so I don't think you'll have to choose which monitor you want here, but I have two, so I'm going to choose monitor two. Uh, let me just rearrange things a little bit here so I can show you what I'm doing. Okay, now I want to open Steam. So I'm going to point and click on the Windows icon here on my desktop, and then I'm going to bring up the virtual keyboard by clicking on this keyboard icon here on the bottom right of the window, and I'm going to type in Steam and uh, hit enter. You'll then go to your Steam library, and we need to launch the Steam VR app. One thing I forgot about, if you don't already have the Steam VR app installed on your PC, you're going to need to go to the Steam store and search for Steam VR and install it to your PC. It's totally free and uh, you need it in order to play any VR games you buy on Steam. Okay, back to the tutorial. You'll then go to your Steam library and now we need to launch the Steam VR app. As soon as you launch Steam VR, you're supposed to be whisked away to the Steam VR interface, which looks like this. All too often though, I find myself in nothing more than this space. While it's pretty and all, there's nothing here to interact with. If this happens to you, and it probably will, you'll want to press the menu button on the left touch controller, which is the button with the three lines. The Steam VR menu should then pop up and allow you to select what game you want to run. In this case, I'm going to select Half-Life Alex, and the game will launch. Since this game was built for VR from the ground up, you can navigate the game menus in VR and get straight into playing. It's great. Now let's take a look at some games that had VR functionality added to them at some point after they were originally released. The first one I'm going to take a look at here is Assetto Corsa, which is a racing game. This time around, once we get Steam VR running, we're going to take the headset off, 
go to our PC and launch the game. Since games like this support play on both a monitor and a VR headset, you're going to need to go into the game options and in the video settings, switch the rendering mode to VR. In Assetto Corsa, I've found the setting that works the best with the Quest 2 is this one, Open VR Early Support. You can then queue up what you want to do. Uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to go with what's here right now. And now what I want to do is get my mouse cursor over the start engine button here. And then I'm going to put on my headset and get myself situated as if I were sitting in the driver's seat of my car. I can then click on start engine and that will load me into the race. In this game, I've found it's kind of important to have your head in the position it's going to be in when you're racing because once the track loads up, if your head is not in the correct position, you're going to find yourself clipping through your driver's body or the car or something. If this happens to you, you can recenter by simply getting yourself positioned in your seat and then press control and spacebar on your keyboard and that should get you back in the driver's seat. To start the race, you then have to go back to your mouse and use it to click on the steering wheel icon here to start the race. I really wish they'd integrate VR controls into this so you don't have to go back and forth to your keyboard and mouse. But this is just some of the quirkiness I've found you often have to deal with in games that weren't built for VR from the get-go. One other example I want to take a look at real quick is Microsoft Flight Simulator. Once again, once we have Steam VR running and we're in the Steam VR environment on our Quest 2, we need to take the headset off and go back to our PC and launch Flight Simulator. You'll get your flight all set up. Uh, as for me, I'm a total noob to this, so I'm still doing the uh, flight training missions. I'm going to queue up one of those and then click Fly. It should then load up your flight, and the next thing you'll be prompted to do is click on Ready to Fly. You'll now see the cockpit view say. on your PC monitor, but if you put on the headset, you will probably see something like this. Before you can view Flight Simulator in VR, you first need to switch over to VR mode. You can do this through the menu, but I prefer to use the keyboard shortcut and press Control and Tab at the same time on my keyboard. And that will toggle the game over to, to say, VR mode. To As of the making of this video, VR controllers are not supported in Microsoft Flight Simulator. You have to fly with either your keyboard and mouse, an Xbox controller, or some kind of flight stick. Talk about killing the immersion. Being able to view the game in VR is cool, but not being able to interact with the things you see around you is a huge letdown. Asobo Studio, the developer of Flight Simulator, says they're working on implementing VR controls, but this has been the rumor since the beginning of 2021. It's currently the beginning of September 2021, and VR controller support is still missing. Anyway, this video isn't supposed to be a rant about missing features in games. It's supposed to be a help for those wanting to play Steam VR games on their Quest 2 or people having trouble getting Steam VR games running on their Quest 2, and hopefully it has been helpful to you. I know this is only a very small sample of games and potential hurdles to jump to get Steam VR games running on your Quest 2, but my hope is this will get you started and help you as you figure out the different quirks in other games that you may come across. So yeah, this is the end of the video, the part that no one watches. But for those of you still here watching, I have my Quest 2 playlist you can check out over there. Or, down in the corner right there, we will see uh, how well YouTube did at suggesting some other video that you may or may not be interested in watching.